Whenever I was doing any physical work, I would have a shortness of breath and at times a tightness in the chest area. I really didn't have a lot of symptomology until we were down here at the cottage one day and I was walking up the hill from the garage to the cottage and I had heaviness in my chest and I got quite short of breath. Like these people, you've been referred to the New Brunswick Heart Centre, located here at the St. John Regional Hospital for a coronary angiogram. This is a special test that allows us to obtain important information about your heart. You may often hear different terms for a cardiac catheterization, such as a dye test or a coronary angiogram. These all refer to the same thing. There are a number of different medical reasons for having this test. The most common reason for a cardiac catheterization is when people are suspected of having coronary artery disease. Coronary artery disease is a medical term that describes one or more blockages of the coronary arteries. These arteries supply the heart with blood in order for it to function. Other medical reasons for having a cardiac catheterization may be to assess the heart valve, the heart musculature, and the strength of the heart muscle or, in rare cases, to assess an electrical problem. Your doctor will discuss with you in detail the specific reason why you've been referred for a cardiac catheterization. Physiology of the heart. Your heart is a muscle that pumps blood continuously to all parts of your body. The heart has a total of four chambers. Two chambers are found on the right side, and the other two are on the left side of the heart. The right side of your heart receives blood low in oxygen from your body by way of your veins. This blood is pumped to your lungs, where it picks up oxygen and is then returned to the left side of your heart. This oxygen-rich blood is then pumped out to your entire body by way of your arteries. As the blood passes from chamber to chamber in your heart, it passes through a series of four valves. Each valve is made of thin but very strong flaps of tissue. The valves open and close very much like a door opening and closing as your heart pumps. The four heart valves open and close over 100,000 times each day. It is the job of the valves to ensure that blood flows through your heart in the right direction. You can be born with an abnormal heart valve, or sometimes the aging process may weaken a normal heart valve. Sometimes different heart problems and diseases can also damage the heart valves. In some cases, an operation may be needed to repair or replace the damaged heart valve. To keep your heart pumping properly, it needs a constant supply of oxygen-rich blood. There is a network of blood vessels that supply the heart muscle with blood. These blood vessels are called the coronary arteries. The coronary arteries run along the surface of your heart. Blood flows easily through healthy coronary arteries, but over time, Fats, cholesterol, and other materials can build up on the walls of your coronary arteries to form a substance called plaque. The coronary arteries become narrowed with plaque, and this can reduce the blood flow. This reduction in blood flow results in the heart muscle not getting enough oxygen for it to do its work. When this happens, you may experience symptoms such as chest discomfort, pressure, tightness, heaviness, burning, or shortness of breath. This can happen especially during physical activities such as walking briskly, mowing the lawn, or raking leaves when the heart must work harder and so requires more oxygen-rich blood. The medical term for these symptoms is angina. Regardless of the specific medical reason for your doctor referring you for a cardiac catheterization, this procedure, along with other tests, will help your heart specialist determine the best treatment for your specific heart problem. Whether you are coming from home for the test or are in hospital waiting, the doctors and nurses will help prepare you for your exam. You'll have blood tests drawn to check that your kidneys are working properly and that your blood count is not too low. A chest x-ray and an electrocardiogram will also be done. These things are all necessary for your heart specialist to determine that it is safe for you to have the cardiac catheterization. The doctor and nurse will review the procedure with you. As with any medical test or procedure, a cardiac catheterization has both benefits along with some possible risks. Your heart specialist will discuss these with you in terms of your own individual situation. 
you will be asked to sign a consent form in order to go ahead with the test. In preparation, you may be asked not to eat or drink for approximately eight hours before the test. The nursing staff on your unit will get you ready for your test. A nurse will place an intravenous, more commonly known as an IV, into a vein in your arm or hand. The IV will be used to give you fluids and medications during your test. The area on your skin where the doctor will place the tube for your test will also be prepared. Usually, your right groin or your right wrist area will be used for the test, so in preparation, your nurse will shave both these areas and then clean them with an antiseptic solution. Your procedure is performed in a special area of the hospital called the Cardiac Catheterization Laboratory, or cath lab. There, you will meet the heart specialist, also known as the interventional cardiologist, and the team of nurses and technicians that will help with your test. When everything is ready in the procedure room, you will be moved into the room and you will be helped onto the x-ray table. The temperature of the room is kept cool because of the x-ray and recording equipment. If you are cold, please ask for an extra blanket. You will notice an x-ray machine over your head, TV screens and heart monitors to your left. The nurse will clean the skin on your wrist or groin area with an antiseptic liquid to help prevent infection. This will feel cold. You will be then covered with sterile sheets from your shoulders to your toes. The doctors, nurses and technicians wear green gowns, masks, hats and gloves during the procedure to help prevent infection. It is very normal for you to be feeling nervous before your test. Often you will be given a mild sedative through your intravenous before the test to help you relax and keep you comfortable during the test. You are not put to sleep for the test. It is important for you not to touch the sterile sheet or move. If you are uncomfortable and you must move, it is important to ask first, and the nurse will help you change your position slightly. The doctor will begin the procedure by giving you an injection of local anesthetic to the area where the tube will be placed, which will freeze or numb the skin. This may cause a stinging or burning sensation. Then, a tiny cut or incision is made into the skin over the artery. A small tube called a sheath is placed into your artery through the incision made in either your wrist or groin area. You may feel some pressure or discomfort, but this should not be painful. If you do experience pain, let your doctor know right away. Once the sheath is safely in place in the artery, the doctor will pass a long, tiny tube called a catheter through the sheath all the way to your heart. If the test is done from the groin, you will not feel the catheter moving inside your body. If the test is done from the wrist, you may feel the catheter moving up your arm. X-ray dye will then be injected through the catheter. As the dye travels through the coronary arteries, X-rays of the arteries will be taken. You may be asked to hold your breath or cough when the X-rays are taken. Your doctor needs to take different views of your arteries so the x-ray camera will be moved around you and take pictures on both sides of your chest. The camera does come down quite close to your chest and face, but will not hit you. Any blockages in the coronary arteries will appear on the TV monitors and will be recorded. During the test, your doctor will often use another type of catheter to look at the pumping action of the heart and the condition of your heart valves. When the x-ray dye is put in, you may experience a warm feeling that spreads around your body as the dye travels through your blood vessels. The feeling that you have passed urine is a common feeling. Do not worry, this feeling will last only 5 to 10 seconds and is harmless. The test will take about 30 minutes from the time you go on the table. While you are still in the procedure room, your interventional cardiologist will often review and discuss with you what the cardiac catheterization has shown and what treatment will be best for you. If your wrist has been used for the test, the doctor will remove the tube from your wrist at the end of the test before you are moved from the x-ray table. A plastic bracelet or clamp will then be placed around your wrist to prevent bleeding. The bracelet will feel tight and you may experience some mild tingling and tenderness of your hand and fingers. You can usually sit up right away and move about in bed after your test. 
The bracelet will be kept on your wrist for approximately two hours and will then slowly be released until it can be removed. It is important to remember not to put pressure on your wrist. So, for example, do not use your wrist to push yourself up in bed. You may move your fingers, but do not flex your wrist. You should treat the wrist as if it were broken for the rest of the day. All these measures will help reduce the chances of bleeding from your wrist. If your groin area is used for the test, you will be moved off the x-ray table to your stretcher and taken out to the waiting area in the cath lab. While in the waiting area, the nurse may remove the tube from your groin area, or it may be removed in one to two hours after you've been returned to your room. When the tube is removed, firm pressure will be applied to the groin area for approximately 20 minutes in order to stop the bleeding. If your groin is used for the test, it is important to remember that you will be kept flat on your back and quiet for approximately four hours. Please do not lift your arms over your head or place them under your head. It is also important not to bend your knee or lift your leg on the side that was used for the test. You can bend the leg that was not used for the test. Do not cross your legs. Do not strain or lift. If you need to cough or sneeze, the nurse will show you how to apply slight pressure over the groin area. All these measures help prevent bleeding from your groin area. Throughout the day, your nurse will remind you of these activities that you should avoid. You will be returned to your hospital room approximately 45 minutes following the completion of your test. Your nurse will give you specific instructions depending on whether your wrist or groin has been used for the test. Some people may be discharged home later that same day, while others may be required to stay in hospital. Your heart specialist will tell you when you will be able to go home and review your treatment plan with you. Before you are discharged, your nurse will also discuss with you and your family what to expect when you go home. Your treatment options will depend on the results of your catheterization, which are the degree and the location of your blockage, results of other tests, and your state of health. There are often a number of different treatment options. Medication can be the best treatment depending on the type and degree of blockage that is present. If the blockage is severe enough, coronary angioplasty and the placement of a stent may be the best treatment option, which can often take place during the same procedure. Coronary angioplasty is a balloon procedure used to open up narrowed or blocked arteries. To perform coronary angioplasty, a small balloon is inserted through the tube already in place in your groin or wrist area. The balloon is then passed into the narrowed heart artery and is inflated. This will press the blockage of plaque to the sides of the artery, stretching the artery open, allowing the blood to flow more easily. In most patients, a stent will also be placed in the artery. A stent is a small wire mesh tube that will help keep the artery open. The stent is placed on the balloon catheter, and when the balloon inflates, the stent will open up in the artery. The balloon and catheters will then be removed. The stent will stay in the artery permanently. In the months to come, your artery wall will heal over and cover the stent. Sometimes, open heart surgery is the better treatment option, in which case we will ask for a cardiac surgeon to speak with you when you have returned to your room. In some cases, you may need further heart tests in order to best decide which treatment is best for you. No matter which treatment option is recommended for you, whether it's medication, angioplasty and stenting, or cardiac surgery, lifestyle modifications such as stopping smoking, eating a low-fat diet, keeping your weight the correct level for your height, and getting regular exercise are the first important steps you can take to improving your cardiac health. Your healthcare provider will work with you to help you learn about ways in which to make these lifestyle changes. Your concerns about having a cardiac catheterization are entirely normal. Most people tolerate the cardiac catheterization procedure with no problem, and patients who have experienced it can attest to that. It's been going uphill ever since, uh, which I'm very happy. Well, go with a positive attitude and uh, listen to what they tell you, do what you're told and afterwards do what you're told again uh, and uh, that's how you'll do your best is by you know following the rules and regulations and uh, you know letting stress go a little bit relaxing some yeah 
Should you have any questions or concerns about the cardiac catheterization, please feel free to speak with your doctor or healthcare provider or contact us here at the New Brunswick Heart Center.